Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, August 27th, and it is a beautiful day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Nice, warm, sunny. It was supposed to rain. I don't know what happened. Such is life. It's good to be back. Took uh, last week off, went to the pipe show, had an adventure, gonna, gonna talk to you about that. Did some fishing, just had a big old time. Uh, smoking this beautiful new uh, pipe from Tim West. This is a, uh, I don't know, is that a Canadian, a lumberman? Absolutely gorgeous rusticated pipe. Uh, this is from Tim's Old West line, so he uses a pre-phrased stummel on that, but man, it smokes fantastic. I've been smoking the heck out of it, which is my way of breaking in a pipe. And this morning I've got some, uh, sorry, looking for a tamper here. I've got some haunted bookshop. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> I've got some old Joe Krantz in this. I normally break in a pipe with Haunted Bookshop, uh, but I took the bag of Haunted Bookshop upstairs to refill the jar, and I didn't bring it back down, and I was lazy. So, old Joe Krantz is close enough. So, let's give this another light. Got so much to tell you about. This is probably going to be a long one. Uh, went to the pipe show, had an absolutely fantastic time. Uh, this is the Columbus Pipe Show, the North American Society of Pipe Collectors Show. Uh, Man, I, I, I just I just love that weekend. It was so much fun. And uh, left early, uh, took off Friday, I think. So I left on Thursday, uh, went to Central PA, and stayed at a campground in the State College area and fished for quite a while. Uh, well, quite a while. Fished uh, all day Friday, all day Thursday, and a tiny bit on Friday morning before I took off. And uh, yeah, it was great. It was beautiful. I'm going to show you some pictures from that. Made a stop along the way at a uh, really fantastic tool, sh tool store, antique tool store in Ohio, uh, which is called Colonial Homestead Tools. And I'll put a link below to that. I don't have anything to show you about it other than I'll show you some pictures of the place. If you're ever in that area and you like antique tools, good God, it was a fantastic place. And then off to the pipe show, got to the pipe show Friday evening, uh, spent Friday evening and all day Saturday and then drove home on Sunday. Great time. So let me, um, let me show you some pictures, kind of take you through the, the adventure and then we'll come back and we'll talk in detail about the pipe show. I'll show you some of the, some of the stuff I brought home with me. So let's see, to do the pictures, hopefully, there we go. So there's me fishing. Uh, <laughs> so for about two days, that's what I looked like. That was my fishing pipe, which is my old uh, cob that I was smoking uh, past couple of videos, and it served me well. I had a really good time, beautiful country uh, in, in central PA, uh, north central PA, I should say. Uh, so let's see, I got to... You gotta figure out why the images aren't advancing, and there we go. So while I was there, I certainly ate healthy. This this was my lunch one day from uh, Mr. Hot Dog and More, which is a wonder. If you, if you like hot dogs, <laughs> it's a great place to go. Uh, but it's it's a great place for a quick, inexpensive lunch while you're on the stream. Uh, those are their uh, Texas dogs, and they got the chili and onion and whatnot on them, and yeah, french fries, and that is indeed a uh, carbonated beverage back there. I don't often drink soda, but once or twice a year I'll have something, and that is a root beer, so quite enjoyed that, uh, and got back out fishing again. Uh, there's the main competitor that I saw when I was on the stream. I did not see many other fishermen and that's because it was it's the off season you know it's it's a perfect time to go because these streams can get pretty crowded they're very popular uh still plenty of fish still a good time no great hatches or anything uh, it was mostly uh well it was all nymphing i didn't see any surface activity so i was nymphing the whole time but that is a blue heron uh they're quite common around trout streams in pennsylvania that bird is about four foot tall and terrifying because it'll just stare you down it's fishing and it doesn't want you anywhere near where it's fishing so uh i i respected it from a distance took a picture of it gave it couch's address and moved on 
Uh, did catch uh, a few fish, probably about five altogether. This is the first one of the day. It's a it's a brown trout, respectable size, uh, about a about a foot long. And uh, yeah, I I usually try to take a picture of the first one, and then the rest of them I'm, I catch and release always. So he got back in the water very quickly. But uh, usually I just try to shake him off the hook rather than bring him uh, onto land because it's just better for the fish, and I I want somebody else to be able to catch him, or maybe I'll catch him next year, who knows. But yeah, got uh, got about five, I think five, maybe six, and uh, got a lot of hits, this nymphing that happens, just couldn't set the hook, and it was just a fantastic time. I really, really enjoyed myself. Then moved on uh, Friday morning and made a stop at this uh, Colonial Homestead shop, and good God, I thought I had gone to heaven. This place is loaded with tools. I mean, just unbelievable density of tools. This is this is not crowded at all. I'll show you. This is some of the planes. You see some of the big uh, bow saws in the background there, frame saws, uh, hammers on the wall. I mean, there were just tools everywhere. You see, see some panel, um, sorry, back, back saws all along the wall there too. Oh man, I spent about an hour in there. Uh, the guy who was working there uh, was named Dan. Incredibly knowledgeable about planes. I really enjoyed talking to him for, oh gosh, probably about 30 minutes. We talked. Uh, he did sell me a plane. I think I've got a picture of the plane I bought. Oh, there's some more. Another shot of the shop. It is a working shop, by the way. They do traditional woodworking. And, uh, that's kind of cool. They didn't have anybody working when I was there, but uh, there's a section that's like another part of the shop, different room that's got all set up for woodworking and they use all traditional methods. And uh, yeah, this is what I wound up buying. It's a, it's a plow plane. I haven't dated it yet. Uh, it's by a T Kearney and that's all I can tell you right now. It's got a not complete set of blades, but you can always add blades to these. And uh, I've always wanted a plow plane. And now I have a nice wooden plow plane. So I haven't tried it yet. Got, got to do a little cleanup on it, get it a little tuned up and everything. But it's pretty much ready to go. And I was really happy that I didn't think I was going to buy a plow plane that day. But it turns out I bought a plow plane. And then moved on to the show. I don't have a lot of show pictures. You know, just a couple to give you an idea of the size um, and the variety of things. It was an incredible show, uh, much, much better than last year, just in terms of both attendance and the number of vendors. Now, people have said, people said at the show, and I've seen a couple of videos saying, oh, that's because of COVID. No, I don't think that's the case. If you folks remember, the Richmond show was starting right after the show last year. And during this show, while we were at the Columbus show last year, they canceled the Richmond show. And I think there were a lot of people that, that, were, that had to decide between the two shows. And they planned on the Richmond show, and it got canceled. This year, I don't think there was a Richmond show. And that's why this one was so much better uh, attended. So really, really fantastic. Uh, it's another shot of some of the tables. And I think I might have one more. So just to give you an idea of what, what it was like to be on the floor of the show. had a great time, talked to a lot of folks. We're, we're going to go through all the people I met and such. Um, talked to Tim West for quite a while, bought this pipe that I'm smoking right now from Tim, and also got some briar. Uh, he had some really nice aged briar there that I picked up, and uh, he had good price on it. And, uh, you, you know, the bonus is when you buy from Tim, you get to talk to Tim, and he's just a fountain of knowledge. So that was a good time. Picked up 10 pieces altogether. There's five plateau and five epichons. And uh, yeah, so we're back to the beginning. So now if I can get back to me. No, that's not me. There we go. I got to get that fixed. <laughs> and let me just so that it doesn't mess up later. So yeah, hopefully that gave you an idea of the, the flavor of the week. I wanted to go through that early part. I could tell you fishing stories. I had a tire incident happened to me which was quite uh quite fun got a potentially almost flat tire when i woke up on friday 
and uh, turned out there was nothing wrong with it. Got a whole story around that, maybe a future video. Uh, fishing was great. Uh, went to different local eateries and, and talked to folks and had a great time at a bar called uh, Robin Hood Tavern, I think it was. Uh, associated with a brewery that had some fantastic beer. Talked to a fellow from Pittsburgh about jazz in Pittsburgh. I mean, it's just a great time. And at the show, good God, I met everybody. Uh, well, not everybody, but it seemed like everybody. Uh, so Friday night, checked into my room. When I, as I walked in, I saw uh, Brian Doran, Beans 316, and Odie, WKRP Piper at the bar. And I waved to them, went, checked into my room, went back down to the bar, uh, hoping to see them there. They were gone, but at the bar was someone I met last year, a fellow named T. Greg, and I chatted with him for a little bit. And then I heard a voice that I recognized. And I turned and looked, and there's a gentleman on the phone that looked familiar to me. I couldn't quite place him. He's, he's not looking directly at me. He's got the phone up to his ear, and there's this really loud voice coming through. And I said, oh, that's Eric the Blue Collar Pipe Smoker's voice. That must be Larry Black. <laughs> and it was indeed. There was someone sitting with Larry. Unfortunately, I cannot remember who it was. It might have been... I can't remember who it was. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anyone. But uh, uh, you know what? I think it was Andrew. I think it was Pipe Dude. Uh, so anyway, met Andrew, saw Larry, chatted with Larry quite a bit. Uh, Eric did come in. He didn't get there until I didn't see Eric until Saturday. But uh, just had a great time talking to these guys. So let me just kind of go through some of the people I met, and I'm gonna have to put my glasses on because I wrote notes in there. They're quite awful, uh, difficult to see. Yeah, so T. Greg was the first guy I saw. He's uh, he's not a YouTube guy, but I met him at the show last year. And his friend Andre uh, Andre Tessier, who's uh, he's on. They're both on Facebook, I believe. And uh, Andre's a really nice guy. He's he's involved in the show organization and and, and such. Uh, so saw both of them, Larry Blackett, as I mentioned, and, and Eric uh, eventually came along, and Eric's dad was there, so it's great seeing those guys. Uh, Beans 316, uh, Brian Doran, Cole, Big Country Briar was there, Odie, WKRP Piper. Uh, Jeff, Tamper Tantrum, it's fantastic seeing Jeff, got to chat with him for a while. You know, the problem with these things is you never have enough time. Like, I, I probably had about an hour total with Jeff. You know, we were sitting at a table with some other folks, and uh, so the conversation, you know, it was never like I could sit down one-on-one -on -one and chat with them. Uh, that just, there's just not time. It's a shame these things are only a day and a half long, but it was great seeing uh, Tamper Tantrum. Uh, Ethan Parsimonious Piper, great, great to see him. Uh, Greg, uh, Tunnel Tape Greg was there. Uh, Andrew Pipe Dude, I already mentioned him. Got to spend a fair amount of time talking to Andrew. Met Andrew's wife, uh, Tiffany, I believe was her name. Uh, sorry if I messed that up. Uh, old Uncle Willie, Jim PM. Uh, Todd Barstow. Todd is a, is a viewer, and uh, he, I wound up spending quite a bit of time chatting with Todd. It was wonderful to meet you, Todd, and, and to spend time getting to know you and talking pipes. We had a fantastic time. Uh, Greg Folk, uh, another another viewer who I met at the show last year, but didn't have a lot of time to talk to him. Had had some more time to chat with Greg, uh, Steve Lefty, and a couple of numbers. Sorry, Steve, I do not remember your YouTube handle, um, but it was great meeting you, Steve. And then just a bunch of people that um, just came up to say hello. You know, just said I watch you all the time, and, and that was so nice. Uh, there was Andy and his wife Jody. Uh, Bill, Bob, uh, Don, Jim, Jake, Don, Don and his son Jake, which was kind of neat, a father and son. We spent a lot of time chatting with those two guys, uh, along with Jeff Tamper Tantrum. Uh, Tim, it, yeah, there, there were just so many. And it was really, really cool because people would just come up and say, hey, I watch you all the time. You don't know me. Uh, I, don't, I never commented or anything. Uh, people wanted to take pictures with me, which was kind of weird, but I, I mean, I enjoyed it and I'm really happy for it, but 
you know, I'm not a celebrity for goodness sakes. <laughs> but it was fun. It was just really fun to, to have this happen. And it happened to other YTPC folks that were there. Uh, you know, we all had a, had a great time. And we did hang out together quite a bit, which, uh, you know, was, was good because people were comfortable coming up and saying hello. So it wasn't clickish at all. Though. But, uh, you know, you, you gravitate towards the folks you know. So, uh, got some stuff, bought some stuff, and, of course, benefited from the generosity of so many, so many kind people. And I want to share some of that with you. Uh, first off, as, as I said, this pipe from Tim West and the briar that I picked up from him. Uh, really, really love the pipe. And it's been smoking just beautifully. So I've been wanting a Tim West pipe for a long time, and... Now it got me one, and it's really my style. It's billiard-esque. I know it's not a billiard, but it, it's billiard-esque. Uh, very tall, deep bowl. Holds a, holds a lot of tobacco, so fantastic. Uh, Greg, tunnel take. Immediately, uh, when I saw him, <laughs> I said, oh, I got something for you. And he gave me this beautiful lighter, and it's, a, uh, it's an honest lighter. It's got the pipe tools on it, and very, very handy. Does get all the way down into the bowl. And it's one of these soft flame. So just a, a really nice, nice butane lighter. Now, I don't use these often, but they are convenient because you you know you can fill one of these and they're good for a couple days. Whereas the Zippo, you got to fill every day and all that. Uh, it's nice to have the tools right on there, and it's you know it's an attractive lighter. So I'm sure I will find use for this. Um, in my travels. So thank you, Greg. Really, really appreciate it. It was great seeing you. Larry Blackett, uh, I picked up a tamper from him. Uh, one of the things I knew I was going to buy at the show. And there we have it. Yes, that is a President Trump tamper. Isn't that wonderful? So now I can tap my pipe and think about better days and hopefully better days to come. Uh, I was, I was talking to Larry, I said, you know, Larry, one thing that happens every, every time I show the Roadrunner tamper, people say, I wish he made a coyote. And Larry said, oh, I, I, we make a coyote. I said, oh, really? I, I and, and of course, Larry being Larry, he immediately gives me a coyote to show y'all. So they do indeed make a coyote. So your Roadrunner, if you got a Roadrunner and you want a coyote, that is available. Unfortunately, and I feel really bad about this because Larry wouldn't take money for it. He just insisted that I take it. Uh, when I got back and I went to put it in with my other tampers, I realized that I have one of these already. I was wrong. It wasn't the Roadrunner that I was talking about. It was whenever I show off Gumby, people say they want Pokey. So I mentioned that to Eric, who talks to Larry all the time. In a, in a text message, and Eric said, well, we do make Gumby, and you have one. I, I, or he does make Pokey, and you have one. And I haven't had a chance to go through the tempers to see if I do, in fact, have a Pokey, but I'm all messed up. So if you got Gumby and you want Pokey, go talk to Larry Blackett. Buttons for your britches on, on Instagram. And, uh, yeah, Larry, I just love the, the detail on these things. is unbelievable. And it just... You know who that is right away. I love that. And then, continuing down the, the line of generosity, Eric had a whole bunch of tampers, and I was looking at them, and this one really struck me. I don't know if you're going to be able to tell. Yeah, you should be able to see that. This is uh, an old tamper. I forget the date on it. That Eric did tell me the history of it. But it was a clay pipe tamper, and they Larry made it bigger so that it can be used on briar pipes. But it was originally intended for clay pipes. And you can see that is a clay pipe in the hand. And note the way it's being held. Note that the two, the pinky and the finger next to the pinky, whatever that one's called, are under the pipe. So the hold on that is this. Okay. And it struck me because that's an unusual way to hold a pipe these days. I do it occasionally. I mean, people do do it occasionally. But that's the way, in every picture I've seen of Bela Lugosi holding a pipe, that's how he's holding it. And it just struck me that, that that's the Lugosi hold in my mind. And I told Eric that, and Eric being Eric said, take it. And uh, couldn't talk him out of it, so thank you, Eric. 
Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Greg. Everybody was just so incredibly generous. Highlight of the, the pipe show for me, and it's hard to say that there was a highlight. But my buddy Greg Folk gave me something that, quite frankly, <laughs> has nothing to do with pipes and just made me so happy. Greg was kind enough to give me this. This is the Svengoolie comic. It's one of the covers. They have multiple covers for this one, but I think this is the first one. And, uh, oh man, this is, this. I am so happy with this. You, you guys know I'm a, I'm a big Svengoolie fan. I really love the old, the old horror movies. And, uh, I'm just so pleased to get, to have this. And he gave it to me and everybody sitting at the table going, oh wow, this is great. And Gary was on his way out. I'm sorry, Greg. I keep wanting to call Gary, yeah, Greg, Gary for some reason. Sorry, Greg. Greg Falk, if I said Gary earlier. Greg was on his way out when he gave me this, and uh, I was so happy. And I'm sitting at the table looking at it, and all the other guys are looking at it. And I said, I really want to open this, but I know the way comic book people are. If I open this, they're going to say, ah, you're not supposed to take it out of the sleeve. And like two or three of the people there said, no, you can't take it out of the sleeve. So I brought it home and I'm showing my wife and she's like, oh, wow, I can't believe he, you know, he was nice enough to do that for you. And I said, you know, I know I'm not supposed to, but I really want to take this out of the sleeve and read it. And my wife says, you can't take that out of the sleeve. So I still haven't taken it out of the sleeve, but the truth is I'm going to <laughs> because I want to read it. <laughs> but I'll be very careful with it and i uh, got to get a frame for this because, yeah, that makes me happy. So thank you, Greg. Um... And thank you, everyone. There was so much uh, tobacco to try and, you know, tried things I will never have the chance to try again. I tried things that I, I could try again and really enjoyed. Um, one I'll mention, because it's, it's something that I, I, I'm going to get more of and I, I do highly recommend, is the Seattle Pipe Club Down Yonder. Uh, it's a Virginia blend, but man, that was good. Uh, I think it was Eric Blue Collar Pipe Smoker that gave me some of that really, really nice stuff. Uh, so yeah, I enjoyed that greatly and lots of other tobacco. Everybody was sharing the tobacco and, uh, I took some, uh, well, a couple of things, but, but I had some best brown flake. I had some 1792 flake and, uh, some folks enjoyed that with me. I enjoyed it. Actually, I'm cheating a little bit because the tobacco of the week this week, based on our live stream on Friday is best brown flake, but I did not want to smoke that in a pipe I'm breaking in. So we'll have that next week. I also won a raffle. So there's there's a raffle to support the show. I bought, I think, 10, 10 tickets, you know, little raffle tickets, you write your name and phone number on it and whatnot. And uh, there's more to this story, but I won this neat little uh, Missouri Meerschaum. This is a Cornell and Deal Missouri Meerschaum. It's got a hippie stem on it see the Cornell and Deal logo but it's uh it's a little guy it's a little, this might be similar to the Dagner pokers not sure I didn't have one of those but you know comparing it to a country gentleman you can see the size difference but it's got a nice ample bowl yeah it's gonna be a nice pipe and with the I'm sorry that just that's a hippie step <laughs> it goes it goes well with what folks on the live stream are now calling my crack lighter. With that, I also won, and this is kind of funny if you know me, because you know how much I love this. I don't. <laughs> I won a tin of uh, Sun Bear, and this is, I believe this is the, it says on there, I think it's the 2020 Sun Bear. I can't quite read it, but. So that was fantastic. You know, it's great to, great to win something. That's fun. Uh, actually, I don't want to go into this too much, but I, I did, you know, a lot of people said I disappeared on Saturday and they, you know, wish they had, had some more time to chat with me and whatnot. And we had plans to go out to dinner on Saturday. Uh, it was a large crowd. Um, it was uh, Andrew Pipefool. Did I call him Pipe Dude earlier? Pipefool. Sorry, Andrew. 
uh, and his wife and Eric and Eric's dad. Uh, I hope I mentioned Eric's dad was there. Larry was going to be there. Um, Ethan Parsimonious Piper. Uh, I think Greg Folk was originally going, but I think he canceled. And uh, I, Todd Todd Barstow wound up going with his wife. And yeah, I was I was looking forward to this. But in the afternoon, I got something in my eye. Just sitting outside, something went in my eye. And normally, you know, you can get this out. I tried to get in, I tried rinsing, and it got more and more painful. And I wound up having to go to the ER to get this taken care of. It wasn't a big deal once it eventually got taken care of, but it was it was just an ordeal. They they were very busy, and I didn't actually get it treated until uh, it was like two o'clock in the morning. So I wound up getting back to the hotel five o'clock in the morning. Uh, and then I drove home starting at 8 a.m. So that was, that was a fun Sunday. Uh, anyway, it, it was no damage or anything. It just was something that was stuck and wouldn't come out. I have no idea what it was. A little black fleck of something. And uh, it was extremely painful. So I missed, like, from 3 o'clock on on Saturday. And I didn't get it to go out to dinner on Saturday night. And yeah, So that was, that was sad. I really was looking forward to it. But such is life. Next year, I'll wear goggles. Uh... <laughs> But the reason I, I even tell that story is that when they announced my name, I wasn't there, but Eric Blue Collar Pipe Smoker was, and he was kind enough to, to grab that for me and, and to make sure I got it. So thank you, Eric. Much appreciated. Uh, folks that were there were constantly checking in on me, you know, folks that knew what had happened. Uh, you know, I got text messages. I got emails. Uh, very, very kind. And, you know, it just kind of reinforces the fact that we're we're a big family. We're a big unattractive, dysfunctional family, but, but we love one another. And, uh, boy, events like that just make it all the more clear. All the more clear how wonderful these devices are in our lives, you know, because I wouldn't know any of those people, none of them, if I wasn't a pipe smoker. Somebody came up to me on Saturday morning. His name was Bob. And Bob said, it's so good to meet you. Uh, so many people did this, you know, just people I've never seen before came up and said, hey, you're King Rod Piper, aren't you? Uh, another fellow named Mike uh, saw me in the elevator and didn't realize and then found me afterwards. Uh, so, yeah, just... So, so, so many people, but Bob comes up to me on Saturday morning and he says, Hey, you're, you're Mike. And yeah, we shake hands and we chat for a little while. And he says, I love the YTPC. It's just, I just love it. And I had to come, I think he said he was from Western Ohio and he drove that morning to come and be at this show. And he said, I had to do it because I just love, love the YTPC. And I wanted to meet some of you. And he said, and I'm not a pipe smoker. What? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense at all, Bob. And he told me the story, and it's really fascinating. So, Bob had COVID, and apparently, well, first off, Bob's grandfather was a pipe smoker, but that's the only pipe smoker he knew. And he was quite young. Um, Bob got COVID, and when he, when he recovered from COVID, and this is apparently not uncommon, he started smelling pipe smoke and he said, you know, it's very distinctive and nobody is smoking a pipe. It's just something that, you know, COVID screws up your sense of smell. And he started smelling pipe smoke and he said it was driving him crazy. And apparently people report smelling cigars, cigarettes, all, all kinds of things after COVID. So he must have, you know, started to do some research into it and stuff. And he stumbled upon YouTube videos and, Bob is a member of our community. He's not a pipe smoker. <laughs> He's bought some pipes, he told me, but he hasn't smoked them yet. So, Bob, we're glad to have you along. It was great meeting you. Uh, yeah, just just fantastic. So, I don't know how long I've been talking, but it's probably longer than I should. But I had a lot to tell you, you know? So get yourself to a pipe show. And if you're anywhere near Columbus, Ohio, 
get yourself to the Columbus show next year because it's a wonderful show. I am not going to Las Vegas. I'm installing a sidewalk instead. Sidewalks are expensive. Uh, there is Brian Doran is trying to organize a Boswell meetup for the weekend of the Las Vegas show. So that'll be fun. Kind of an anti Las Vegas show for all the East folks, guys that can't get to it. But that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'm definitely going to target the Mule Town show. And there's some chance that there's the Albany, the P Capital Land Pipe Show, which I believe is September 16th. Uh, I'll put a link below for that as well. I'm hoping to get to that. I don't know yet because my wife is leaving for Pittsburgh tomorrow and we got to, you know, figure out travel plans and when our sidewalks coming in and all that kind of stuff. So I may or may not go to that and make that part of my trip up to Vermont this year. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, get to a pipe show. They're a great deal of fun. Well, guys, with that, I'm going to draw this to a close. Um, it's going to be a, a Sunday. I've got, got a lot of stuff to get done, and uh, I'm going to continue to enjoy this pipe, have a bit more coffee, and move on with the day. I hope you have a fantastic Sunday. I hope you're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. <laughs>